During the hours she spends at the Bai, she notes all the arrivals, and crucially, who greets whom. It's late afternoon, and Andrea has noticed two related elephants who've arrived from different parts of the forest. This is uh, Mimi One, who's the matriarch of this group. Mimi One knows that Mimi Two is there, yet yeah, they're heading right towards each other. There we go. There's a nice greeting going on right now. Some very low frequency. Yeah, now they're trunking each other. Yeah. Yep. That's a mother and daughter. So some of these greetings are very subtle. And if you know the individuals, then you can predict them. By understanding these relationships, Andrea's made an important discovery. In the forest beyond the Bai, it's rare to see more than one elephant at a time. People assumed they led solitary, independent lives. Andrea believes that even though relatives might not stay together in the forest, they do appear to know each other's whereabouts. I think it was the general misconception about forest elephants only having small family groups. But they do have extensive networks, and they should, because, I mean, we know that about savanna elephants. Why shouldn't forest elephants still maintain these social groups? Zangabai, as well as offering medicinal salts, appears to be an important venue for elephant family reunions. Andrea is beginning to understand why the Bayaka call this place the Village of Elephants. But even the Bayaka don't understand how the elephants appear to second guess each other's movements. How they know when other family members will be at the Bai. To get to the bottom of this, Andrea has had to start thinking like an elephant. Tuning into this forest world, as they do.